Okay, I have nine new makeup launches in front of me that I've been testing for a week, and I'm gonna share my thoughts on all of them. If you're new here, I try to do things a little bit differently. You know, the perception of the influencer is so negative these days. I really try to be someone that you can go to for honesty, transparency, and trust. So my reviews are really detail-oriented, and they tend to be really critical so that you can make your best buying decision. We all work really hard for our money, and especially with the rise of TikTok, there's just such a focus on consumerism and like buying buying the latest launches and trying the viral makeup, but I really want my channel to be more of a comfort space where you can go to for non-sensationalized content. I'm gonna start with the product I'm most excited about, which is a bomb concealer. It is the Live Tinted Hue Skin Serum Concealer. These are $26, they come in 20 shades, they're vegan and cruelty-free, and you can get them at Ulta or Live Tinted, but if you buy them at Live Tinted, I do have a coupon code, which I will list in the description box below, and I'll put it somewhere on the screen. The website says, introducing a concealer that does it all. Live Tinted's Hue Skin Serum Concealer's lightweight, full coverage formula helps to erase the appearance of dark circles while helping to brighten them over time, thanks to the active levels of niacinamide, Bakuchiol and vitamin C. This also has caffeine and it's totally fragrance and essential oil free. All right, let's get into the good stuff. This is officially my number two favorite concealer of all time. Nothing will ever beat my beloved Fit Glow Concealer. That is just the holy grail. It's basically an eye cream first and then they added mineral pigments that provide full coverage. It's just, it's the best of the best. This is a very, very close second because it's super similar in the texture and the finish and the coverage. So I would say if you've been wanting to try the Fit Glow, which is around 42 dollars I think. This would be a great option at 26. The Lip Tinted Concealer has a thick, tacky kind of texture, much like the Fit Glow, but it's also nice and creamy, so I find that it really does hydrate my under eyes. It's almost like it just smooths over them exactly like the Fit Glow, versus pretty much every other concealer I try really is like too thin and slippery and always ends up just creasing super badly under my eyes, or they're so blendable that the coverage just blends right away. I really like an under eye concealer that has more coverage, because if you have a more full coverage product, you can always customize it. For example, if you have a full coverage foundation, you can mix in a moisturizer and make your own tinted moisturizer. You can put in bronzing drops to make it a little darker. You can add luminizing drops if you want to make it a little bit more luminous. You can add mattifying primer to your foundation to make it a little bit more matte. And same thing with concealer, like if you want to change the coverage of a full coverage concealer, you can add a little moisturizer. You can add a little bit of the luminizing drops. It's just, there's so much more customization if you start with a product that has more coverage. It depends on your preference, of course. If you feel like you don't even need coverage and you just want something that's really lightweight, I totally understand that too. But I find when it comes to under eye concealers, thicker products are the ones that tend to smooth over my eyes. And the ones that are super thin and watery and super blendable, I always find are so thin that they just settle into my under eye lines. And sometimes they make my under eyes look a little bit drier. So this concealer is absolutely incredible. I also really, really like the brush. It's just this tiny little brush tip and what I love about it is that because it is a more full coverage concealer, it really applies just a tiny little dot under your eyes and that's all you need, exactly like the Fit Glow. So if you're someone who's used to going in with a light medium concealer and just doing that whole triangle, you're gonna end up with a disaster because if you use a thicker, tackier, more full coverage concealer under your eyes and you use a lot, it's just gonna be way too creasy, it's gonna be heavy and you're gonna be like, ugh, why did I buy this in the first place? So you kinda have to know what you're working with and just know that a little bit goes a long way. I am absolutely absolutely blown away by this. I'm so excited that Live Tinted didn't hop on the bandwagon of, you know, coming out with a super thin, watery, ultra blendable, lightweight concealer with like mica in it. I feel like that's everything that I'm seeing these days and it's kind of the antithesis of everything I like in a concealer. I'm so excited that Live Tinted launched something like this and that they put really nice skincare ingredients in it as well. If you know me, you know it's almost impossible for me to give a concealer a 10 out of 10 rating because I am so picky about the way concealers look under my eyes, but this and the Fit Glow are now the only ones I'm gonna reach for. I would say the Givenchy Skin Caring Concealer is number three, and the Kulfi Concealer is number four, although I do prefer using that one all over my face instead of foundation because it's a medium coverage and I prefer full coverage under the eyes. But man, I'm just rambling here because these are so good. And also, I really like the sponge that they sent me, which is sold separately. It's got this really nice tip, so you can get straight into the corner of your under eyes and you can get a really precise application. Great, great sponge if you're looking for one. Next, we have the Tower 28 Swipe 
Light Serum Concealer. These are $22, they also come in 20 shades, and the website says this is a hydrating concealer that glides on like a serum, but has the medium buildable coverage power to instantly cover dark circles, redness, and blemishes. They say it has a natural finish, it's sensitive, skin safe, silicone free, won't clog pores, medium coverage, and a lightweight serum. It has hyaluronic acid, centella asiatica, and lysine, so a couple good skincare ingredients in there. And my best shade is BU, which I think stands for Malibu. This concealer is unfortunately a skip for me. I've seen only rave reviews about this online. Everyone has said this is incredible, it's skin-like, it looks beautiful. Man, I just cannot get this to work. I showed it on my Instagram stories earlier and I'll actually put in a picture here or somewhere close up so you can see what this did to my under eyes. It really emphasized my under eyes. And I just find that these thinner, serum-y concealers just really like sink into the lines rather than smooth over them. Also for the Tower 28 Serum Concealers, my friend Laura, I'll put her Instagram page linked on the screen above, she swatched all of the concealers at Sephora and you can see from the picture here, they are very, very yellow. They lean very warm. So really not great variation of undertones here, which is a huge bummer. And it just ultimately ended up making my eyes look dry. It really looks like it just sits on top of the skin versus the Live Tinted one I'm wearing now, it just looks like skin. There are some lightweight concealers that I've enjoyed that I think are very skin-like, but this is not one of them. Also, the shade range doesn't work for me personally. The shade BU is too light, although the undertones are pretty good. And then the two shades that are darker than that are way too orange and peachy for me. So, you know, unfortunately for me, I've never really been able to find a good shade match in any Tower 28 complexion products. Also, the Tower 28 concealer to me is light medium. I wouldn't say that it's a solid medium coverage concealer. And I just found that it made my eyes look really dry. So for me personally, I don't know if it's just my skin that it's not working with because I've only seen people rave about this concealer. So uh, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad products, they just don't work for me. So if you do tend to find that your preferences align with mine, maybe give this one a pass. Ooh, Phoebe Bridgers. She's topless. Yes. Okay, sorry. I see a Phoebe Bridgers video and I gotta, I gotta watch it. That's how, that's how it works. Okay, where were we? We are at, these are the Kulfi Heirloom Satin Lipsticks. They're $30 and they come in seven shades. They're also totally fragrance free. I'm wearing the shade Bangle Box right now, but I'll drop in a clip of me applying all of the colors from light to dark. This is a very lovely lipstick formula. You know, it's interesting for me when it comes to lipsticks, I do prefer something that's a little bit more on the lightweight side that I don't really feel, but it can't be slippery. So this is definitely the kind of lipstick formula that I like. It just feels like it's not even there. But when you rub your lips together, it just feels like a creamy, very, 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 very thin balm. These have a really nice amount of pigment despite being such a lightweight formula. And the website says that they're a hydrating, comfortable, high payoff lipstick with a smooth satin finish. They're creamy and buildable. This bomb-like formula is packed with conditioning vitamin E for soothing pigment that melts into the lips. I totally agree with everything they said there. It is just a stunning, stunning lightweight formula that really packs a punch with the pigment, but it doesn't feel like it's too much pigment. They do claim that these are long wearing. I just don't think that's possible with something that's on the more lightweight emollient side. So I wouldn't buy these if you want something punch proof by any means. Means. Obviously, you know, if you kiss your hand, it's gonna come right off. It's a super, super creamy lipstick. But if you want a really lightweight formula that packs a punch, I think this is a fantastic option. I think what's cool about it is I do like that these colors are kind of creating a certain brand identity versus like if they launched with black and white packaging, you wouldn't really know that that's Kulfi necessarily. So I do like that they have a specific color story, like purple and orange is their thing. It's just more so that it feels like very cheap dinky plastic, and that's not something that I totally love. I prefer something like, the, the first thing that comes to mind are the Kosas Weightless lipsticks that are a little bit heavier, they have um, a magnetic enclosure. I really like the way that those feel. I do like my lipsticks to have some sort of like a luxurious weight to them, but these just feel kind of like drugstore quality. Um, they just feel very, very cheap. But the formula and the colors don't feel cheap, so I'm okay with that. Also, it's very difficult to read what the color is at the bottom. The sticker is is super, super tiny, so I'll show you. So the writing is super, super small, and the color is just 
right there. So you can barely see what the shades are. Honestly, I would have to sit there going like this. Okay, Guzzal Glow. It just takes a while to figure out what the shades are. So that's an aspect of the product that I really don't like, but it's not that big of a deal. I just wanted to call it out since I do try to be as detail oriented as possible. As for the colors, my favorite is Bengal Box and that's the one I'm wearing right now. It is just a really nice kind of um, muted, dusty, pinky nude. And I think that's a really good everyday shade for someone with my complexion. My other favorite is Gazal Glow, which is more of a slightly salmony light pink. And the rest of the shades are pretty much just variations on browns with different undertones and different depth of color. And then there's one last one that's a really deep berry that I really enjoy. So I think the shade range was really well done. And Kulfi is a South Asian brand, the first South Asian brand at Sephora, which is really exciting. So what I love about their products is they name the shade names after um, different experiences or items or smells or food that remind them of their childhood and their culture. And what's cool about that is as someone who is just from the United States, I don't know a ton about their culture and it's been really cool to read about it. On their Instagram stories, they will talk about the inspiration, they'll talk about bangle box and the sound that the bangles would make that their mother was wearing. And I just think it's so cool and so thoughtful to have that kind of detail in the products to really share their memories, their culture and experiences with the world. And I think that's really beautiful. I'm so excited because In Beauty came out with the bronze version of the face glaze. If you're new here, I freaking love the In Beauty face glaze. I'm not a glowy primer person because if you can't tell from my skin, I'm wearing like seven layers of powder right now and I still get pretty oily throughout my T-zone when I'm wearing makeup. So I tend to reach for more products that are a little bit mattifying on me, but the face glaze is an exception to that because it just provides this soft focus glow on the skin rather than being something that's like very dewy or wet or really sparkly or luminous. It's just this soft focus effect, kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, but way more subtle than that. And the texture of it is kind of like a gel cream mixed with a richer moisturizer, but on the more thin side. So I've always used the regular face glaze on, you know, my shoulders, collarbones, on my legs. I'll mix it into my moisturizer and I'll apply that in the morning. It just adds a really beautiful kind of luminosity and this like soft focus evening effect. Now they finally came out with a bronze shade and it's really nice. It's not like super, super intense. So you could use this in a million different ways. You can mix it in with your moisturizer to give yourself just a really beautiful bronzed effect without having to add any makeup. You can pop on some sunscreen, then you're good to go. You could use it on its own. You could use it as a liquid bronzer. You could mix it into body lotion for a beautiful effect on the skin. Just a phenomenal multi-purpose product. So that's what it looks like on the back of my hand. You can see once you blend it out, it's really not super, super intense. It has this luminosity and it has shimmer particles in it, but you just can't even detect it. It just looks so incredibly skin-like. The face glaze is $25 and you can get 15% off with my code Kate15. They also launched the bronze body glow body oil to go along with the new lip glaze and the new face glaze. It says it's $47, but right now it's on their website for $44 and you you can also get 15% off with my code. And they say that this is a lightweight body oil that gives the skin the most gorgeous, lustrous, and seamless bronzed glow. This transfer resistant formula visibly firms, smooths, and hydrates skin with hydrators and antioxidants. Beautiful on every skin tone. So they say this is white party approved so that you can apply it on your skin, but it won't transfer to white clothes. I'm wearing it right now all over my chest and shoulders, and I wanted to wear a white top. So let's see, is it transfer resistant? Mm tiny little bit right here, I think transferred, but the whole rest, yeah. So nothing transferred on the strap, but just on the bottom where I move my arm more, I did see a little bit of transfer. So just a heads up on that. I don't know that that claim is like 100% accurate, but what I will say about it is it's, first of all, hold on, let me get up for you. It's super pretty. Like it just makes the skin look super luminous and beautiful, but it's not sparkly. At first, it looks like it might be a little bit sparkly, but once you blend it out, you're just left with something that looks really summery and luminous and healthy and hydrated. I do just want to mention though, if you want something that fully sets down, this is not it. It's a body oil. It stays feeling like a body oil. So right now it's not like slip slidey. It's not slippery at all. It feels like I'm wearing an oil. All right. <laughs> and so I just rub my chest and I'll show you what my hand looks like. Zero shimmer particles, zero color. All you can see is that there's a little bit of like an oily quality to my hands. So it is kind of 
transfer resistant in that way. Some other products I've tried that are like shimmery body oils just like come right off on your hands and it's an absolute disaster. This one more so what you feel is just that kind of, you know, tackier oil kind of feeling. So if you want something that fully sets, go for something else. I don't have a recommendation though because I've honestly never tried a product that like fully sets down. But if you want a body oil that's really hydrating and beautiful that also adds this gorgeous glow, then I think this is a nice option. I also really prefer using it with a brush versus my hands. I really don't like the feeling of oil on my hands. Face oil, body oil, anything. So this brush is phenomenal. The brush is super soft and I think it's a fantastic way to apply a body oil product without having to get it on your hands. So this one was a secret sleeper hit. And finally in the In Beauty Bronzed collection, we have the lip glaze. I love the lip glazes. I love that they have so many different scents and this one is Pina Colada and it smells so good. It smells like a Pina Colada, but like with a lot of pineapple and almost like sunscreen in a good way. Like it reminds me a little bit of the Vacation Ink signature perfume, but in more of like a, a natural edible kind of way. Really, really beautiful. I'm stoked to see them expanding the range. I saw someone with deep skin apply this yesterday and she looked fucking insane. It looked so gorgeous on her. So for me, I do prefer wearing a little bit of lip liner with this to help with the structure. I think it's absolutely perfect for spring and summer and it'll work on all complexions. I just think for me personally, I do like it with a lip liner more. Very excited to see this kind of color come from In Beauty because they do have a lot of lighter, super, super sheer shades. And if you're not familiar with this formula, I would describe the In Beauty lip glazes as a cross between a lip gloss and a lip oil. So they're lighter weight and they're a little bit thinner and more runny than a traditional lip gloss formula, but they're thicker and they definitely have more viscosity and tackiness than a super lightweight runny lip oil. So glaze is a really nice description, I think. So if you've been looking for a lip oil that isn't super duper runny, I think these are a great option. And I would say they're a little bit thinner than the Dior lip oils as a reference point. Next up, we have two new blushes from M Cosmetics. These are the pillow blushes and I have the two shades, peanut and tickled. The pillow blushes are $26. They only come in these two shades, which is very interesting. And the website describes this as a highly sensorial blush with a unique cushion texture, leaving a flush of matte color as pillowy and soft as baby's cheeks. It's a hybrid formula that blends gel, cream, and powder into a springy, supple texture. It's infused with ceramides, peptides, and vitamin E to help condition the skin, and you get an effortless application with your finger or a brush. Interesting that they say that. I've been having a lot of trouble with this formula. It came with this teensy tiny little finger sponge that just did absolutely nothing for me. And then I went in and I tried it with a dense brush, but it went on like a little bit too, um, a little too dense, a little too patchy, a little too pigmented, and then I found it was kind of hard to blend. So then I tried with a fluffy brush and that barely picked up any product and I also found it difficult to blend. So I'm just having a little bit of difficulty finding the right tool for this, but when it is on my face blended, I do agree that it's just a beautiful kind of like soft looking blush. I have not, however, tried this with my fingers. So I'm gonna give that a shot right now. Currently on my cheeks, I'm wearing this, but then on top, I put the Jones Road Powder Blush in Sandy. But let's see, so when you touch it, it does feel like, um, you know, cream powder hybrid, like the MAC Glow Play blushes, but it feels a little more powdery than that. So I think that's why you're gonna get a little bit more of like a soft finish. Yeah, see how it kind of also just took down the oils on my skin? That's really nice. This shade also might be a little light for me. Okay, where was I? I just had to say goodbye to John because he's taking Thumper to a vet appointment in Berkeley and I'm gonna be here by myself for 24 hours. Anyways, something interesting happened um, after I applied this blush with my fingers. I noticed kind of broke up my foundation here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this because with the brighter lighting, it actually makes it look a little smoother. But where I applied it with my fingers here, it broke up my foundation versus this side is still quite smooth from the Jones Road powder blush. But right here, it kind of made it look a little patchy. So let's try it again. It just doesn't look that smooth to me. Maybe it's a shade issue. Maybe this is just a little bit too, a little bit too light for me. So I'm gonna go in with tickled on the other side real quick. I'm just gonna get into better lighting here for you. Okay, so now we're going in with tickled beautiful kind of warm berry color. Yeah, the same thing's happening, applying it with my fingers. It's totally breaking up. Hmm, I don't know. We have peanut on this side and tickled on this side. I do think once it's on the face from far away, it has a 
beautiful kind of soft finish that they're talking about. But up close, it just looks a little, a little rough. And then it's just kind of dry and difficult to blend. So I'm gonna keep playing around with these because I do really like the colors. And I think that like once I get the hang of it, it might be really good. So maybe I'll do like a part two, like final thoughts on new product launches. But let me know if you found a way to make these work, definitely give me some tips. Um, I'm gonna try using a more dense brush next. Okay, I figured out how to use the pillow blushes. You gotta use a super, super stiff, dense brush and really go in there. And that's what makes it apply a lot more smoothly. The sponge didn't work for me. Fingers didn't work. A fluffier brush didn't work. But going in with something like this Beauty Pie foundation brush is definitely making the pigment go on much more smoothly. One thing I noticed is in person, this looks really sheer and natural and seamless on my skin. But under my artificial lights on camera right now, it's looking like it's a little bruisey almost and that I brought it way too far down on my cheeks. So I'm not sure if maybe that's a lighting thing, but I do feel like at least I was able to get a really even pigment. So I'm gonna keep playing around with these. I have another concealer to talk about. It's the Makeup Forever HD Skin Smooth and Blur Undetectable Concealer. I have already reviewed these in a July Fails video. So spoiler alert. I just think that this is a worse version of their HD self-setting concealer. It's less creamy, it's thinner, it's more watery, there's less coverage, and I don't find that it really blurs my eyes that much. Definitely not as much as like my Fit Glow or my Lip Tinted concealers. These are $29 and they come in 20 shades, but what I instantly notice is the Lip Tinted has a much more balanced shade range and much better variations of undertone, whereas this in the Tower 28 seems just a little bit wonky when it comes to the undertones. I agree with the website that the Makeup Forever concealer does have a feather light gel cream texture, but it says that you can build the coverage as you want and it comes in 20 inclusive shades, which is so bizarre to me because they definitely skew way more on the light medium and medium side. And I just think it's kind of a bizarre choice to use the word inclusive specifically when this shade range is actually a little bit weird. And if you go to the Sephora page, people who swatched it at Sephora, people who work at Sephora talked about how weird this shade range was and how it was really limited in terms of undertones, especially on the deep end of the spectrum. So I think that's a little bit misleading in terms of the description. I have the shades 1.5R and 2R. So I just think that Makeup Forever has been getting the shades kind of wrong. And it's surprising for a brand that has really built their reputation off of um, makeup artistry and great shade ranges. So this one was just a little bit off for me. If anything, this is one of the concealer formulas that actually kind of makes my skin look worse and kind of emphasizes texture. So I would skip these. I think if you are someone who thinks that, you know, the Fit Glow or the Lip Tinted concealers just aren't for you because you don't want something full coverage, you don't want something that's on the thicker, tackier side, and you would prefer something more light to light medium coverage, I think the Kulfi or the Givenchy concealers are great. If you want medium coverage that's dewy, go Kulfi. If you want medium coverage that's more on like the soft focus matte side, go Givenchy. Next up, something that was also in my July fails are the Beauty Pie Wonder Gloss Luxe Sheer Lipstick Refill and Keep This Case. So each product comes with a lipstick bullet and then a separate refillable case. Just right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you I don't love the way that they've done this because the refillable case, it's easy where you just just like pop the lipstick right in boop and then it twists up super easy nice component but there's no way for you to tell what the shade is and I didn't see anything on the website where there was an indication of like being able to buy a sticker or something so you would have to open every lipstick to figure out which one it is ultimately these are one of the thinnest most slippery lipstick formulas I've ever tried and there's almost no pigment they do have a really nice vanilla scent that I like I do think the sheer rose one is gorgeous it's just that I have colors that are like it that have more pigment and have a texture that I prefer so for me, these are a skip, but I noticed on the Beauty Pie website when I was looking those up that there's a new line, the Future Lipstick Mattes, and I love the Future Lipstick Lux Shines, one of my all-time favorite lipsticks, not just from Beauty Pie, but just ever. And now they came out with a matte one, and I've been getting into bold matte lips lately, so I might have to buy a couple of those. But the sheer collagen lipsticks, I think that there are just better ways you can spend your money. That's it, those are all the new launches that I have right now. I wanna let you know that I am gonna be doing a new concealer video featuring all three of the concealers that I talked about today, as well as the new House Labs and the new Makeup by Mario. So stay tuned for that video. I'll be doing a whole huge comparison as well as any other concealer that might come out in the meantime. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more honest, detailed reviews. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.